I'm Shan and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a repeat pattern. If you're interested in taking your designs and turning them into repeats and creating wrapping paper to wrap up cute presents, then I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide. So you don't need any specialist equipment at all, no computer software, all you need is a pencil, some paints and some paper. Okay, so the equipment you're going to be needing for this tutorial is first off some paper, it's got some thin um, copy paper. And then the second thing you're gonna need is some thicker paper or some card, some paint brushes, some gouache paints, and then a pencil and a fine liner pen. So the first step in this process is to start off with our blank thin piece of paper. I've divided this up into four equal sections. And then you also need to draw a border going all the way around the outside of the page. So I've got a series of motifs that I've cut out of that thick paper. So I've got the semicircular shapes and the half horseshoe arch shapes. Um, I've also added circles into the mix. So I've got a nice variety of shapes and I've also got lots of different scales. I've cut out 15 motifs in total and I'm gonna use these motifs to lay out and create my pattern design. So the great thing about using motifs like this is that you get to play around with the layout before you actually commit to pencil or pen to paper. So when you're laying out a pattern, you wanna make sure that you've got a nice kind of flow between the motifs. So I'm kind of gonna go for a similar sort of size gaps between motifs. So now I've finished with my layout, I'm pretty happy with that. I think the motifs have a nice flow and there's a nice movement between them and they're kind of evenly spaced around the page too. When we draw onto this page, we wanna make sure that we don't touch any of the edges. If we do touch the edges, then the pattern repeat won't work seamlessly. So I'm gonna draw around a shape. When I get to the edge, to this border, I'll just stop. So now here comes the fun bit. We're gonna cut our design in half, both vertically and horizontally. So we're gonna rotate the two on the right 180 degrees clockwise, and we're gonna rotate the two on the left 180 degrees counterclockwise. And the reason that we're gonna do that is because everything that we've drawn in the middle here once we've rotated it, it's going to end up on the outside edges of this design, which will mean that everything on the outside will then repeat seamlessly. So if you were to line this up, the outside edges would actually match. We're ready to fill in all these gaps. This is a really good opportunity to move around any of the shapes that now they're in this composition don't quite work. And also I'm gonna finish off the shapes that are half drawn as well. did actually move some of the shapes ever so slightly in this composition but the really important thing to remember is to not alter any of the shapes and the positioning on the edges because this is where the design will seamlessly repeat so I'm going to trace this onto my really nice thick sheet of paper and I'm going to use a light box to do that so if you don't have a light box you can also put your artwork up against the window and trace through it like that so now we've traced our design onto our clean sheet of paper that we're gonna paint onto. We're ready to choose a color palette. So these are the colors that I'm gonna be working with today. I've got a yellow, two greens, a blue, and a pink. And I've got a color wheel here, 
we'll explain a bit more. Yellow, green and blue are all next to each other on the colour wheel. We're using predominantly green. Opposite green on the colour wheel is red. So if you wanted to create a real contrast then you would use those two colours but I want it to be much softer than that. So a really great way of having contrasting colours that aren't so intense is to add white to them. So adding white to red makes it pink. finished painting in my tile and I'm really happy with the colour palette. So the next thing I need to do is to scan this in and then print out multiple copies of it. So when I scan it in I'm going to crop down the page using the crop tool in the scanner and then um, I'm going to print out four copies and I'm going to show you what they look like when they're tiled together. So now that's our final design tiled together so you can see how it's repeating and that could seamlessly repeat to infinity so that means you could do all sorts of things with it. I've printed it out at this smaller scale which was 50% of the original um, design which is here and that's really just so that I could show you on the screen what it looks like when it tiles but I've also printed it out at the original scale as well so you can see the difference in scale here which is kind of cool. So there's all sorts of things you could do with this now. You could use it for wrapping paper. And if you didn't want to join it up yourself, you could actually join up the tiles on your computer using Photoshop. And if you're not confident with Photoshop, you could use something like PowerPoint or Word too. And you could print it out as a seamless pattern. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll also leave these template shapes on my website so that you can download them and have a go at creating your own pattern. And um, don't forget to tag me if you do on Instagram. And thanks very much for watching.